Hello boys and girls, this is Electronic Pro Seller from the iBoot team and today I'm here to show you how to set up your Rockminer T1 800 to 900 giga hash ASIC Bitcoin miner. So it is a standalone miner, that means you only have to set it up one time with your computer and then the miner can run all by itself. It has very stable firmware which means you get less than 1% rejection rate on it. And the hashing speed is 800 to 900 giga hashes per second, which is excellent. So, this is the miner. Looks very nice. It has four fans to make sure it runs completely cool. Inside, there are four boards. So that means four individual miners. And on the other side, there's lots of um, holes to allow good airflow through the miner and each board has its own heat sink as well. So this means the miner run, runs very cool and it's also very stable. So it comes in two colors. There's the black one and then there also is a very sexy silver one as well. So you can get silver or you can get black depending on your preference. So if you buy from my website just let me know what color do you want. Okay so now I'm going to show you how to set up one of these miners. So, you will need your Rockminer T1 800 to 900 giga hash Bitcoin miner. You will need a block eruptor controller. This is a little device that lets you control the miner so that you don't need a computer. When you buy from iBoot.com, you get this for free. It also comes with a power supply for the block eruptor controller. This also comes for free when you buy from iBoot.com. And you also need a power supply. So it takes a 1000 watt 6 pin PCIe power supply. Or if you don't have a 1000 watt power supply, then you can use two 500 watt PCIe power supplies. So today I'm going to use two 500 watt PCIe power so supplies. So first, take your data line from the rock miner and connect it to your block eruptor controller. Make sure you plug it into UART 1. That means UART cable connection number 1. Next, take an Ethernet cable from your modem and plug that into the block eruptor controller as well. Finally, take the power supply for your block eruptor controller and connect this. Now we have connected up the block eruptor controller. The last thing we have to do is to connect our power supply. So today I'm going to use two 500 watt power supplies. I'm going to connect them into each board here. Each board has two power plugs. So I'm going to connect them all up. You can also use one 1000 watt power supply, in which case you plug in one cable to each board. Okay, now everything is connected, we are ready to turn on our Bitcoin miner. And turn on the power to your block eruptor controller. Now, we need to use a computer that is also connected to the same network as our Bitcoin miner to set up the username and password and mining pool information. So go to your computer. Click the start button. Type command. Open command prompt. 
Type IP config. Find your Ethernet local area network connection. Make a note of the IP address and make a note of the default gateway as well. So my one is, my IP address of my computer, my laptop, is 192.168.1.100 and the default gateway is 192.168.1.1 So write these down on a piece of paper. This is my one, your one will be different but we'll need it later for when we set up the miner. Go down to your local area network, open network and sharing centre, find the local area connection, click properties, internet protocol version 4, click properties and then type this in here, say so use the following IP address, so type in 192.168.0 and then 111 okay click ok close close Then go back to your web browser and type in the default IP of your miner. So when you get the miner, the default IP of the miner will be 192.168.0.254 and then colon 800 is the port. 8000, sorry. Click enter. Excellent. So now we're in the block eruptor controller and we're going to set our mining pool settings. So you should see the screen. What you want to do now is you want to click settings. Now this is the default IP. You need to change the default IP to one that matches your router. So, my router is not dot zero, it's dot, let me have a look what I wrote down, oh, dot one. And I'm going to set the miner address to now 192.168.1.254, so I can access it more easily. Remember your one might be different, uh, the mask you can leave the same, the default gateway I wrote down for my network is 192.168.1.1 so that's my default gateway so I changed that have a look what you wrote down the web port can still be 8000 system port leave alone DNS should be the same as your gateway okay secondary DNS leave alone And then here, pool URL. So write down your mining pool. So my one is uk1.gigahash.io. Um, I just suggest you use a GH gigahash. I think it's a good one. And um, put down your pool uh, port. Mine is 3330 uh, 43s. Good. Write down your mining, your worker using name. The worker use the name of your mining pool. Mine is iboot.worker1 and the password of your mining pool as well so the worker password which my one is 12345 so everything is okay and set the frequency to 300 it's safe that's the best one to set it at the most stable and now you just double check change my IP change my gateway 
Good. Good, good, good. Okay, it's all okay. So now click update. And it'll say the parameters are updated, rebooting. Then go down back to your uh, network and sharing center, open it up again. Find your local area connection. Click properties. Internet protocol version four. And we no, no longer need to set this IP address here. So we click obtain an IP address automatically. So make sure you do this or else you will not be able to use your internet connection. Click OK. Close. So now the miner looks like it's hashing away nicely. If you look down at the block eruptor controller, you'll see there are two lights, uh, three lights. Two are solid or on and one is flashing. So that one that's flashing means it's accepting shares. So we're ready to log into our hour miner. So go back to your web browser and type in the new IP address of your miner that you just set. 192.168.1, my one was dot one, dot 254 colon 8000. Click enter. Excellent, now we're logged in. And let's see what speed am I getting. Oh wow, so I'm getting 818 giga hashes per second. That's my mining speed. I've set the frequency, that means the speed of the miner to 300 megahertz. So if you want, you could put it to 350. That would be overclocking the miner, but I don't suggest it. Um, excellent. So it's hashing away now at 818 giga hashes per second, which is excellent. So maybe we'll wait a couple of hours and then we'll come back and check and we'll see what speed we're getting then. So let's come back in two hours. So now it's been hashing away happily for about an hour and a half and the lights are flashing away, everything looks good. The miner's running, so let's go back and check the speed. One six eight one. That's the IP address of my miner now. Click enter. Okay, let's check it out. So, what speed are we getting? Wow. So I'm getting uh, eight hundred and ninety-eight giga hashes per second. Wow, that's amazing. Um, not bad at all. So uh, I'm doing really well actually on that. And you can see here each board how fast they're going. One's going at 215, the other one's 214, one's 230, and one's 238. Wow, excellent. So, thank you for watching, and um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in buying a Bitcoin a Rock Miner T1 800 to 900 Giga Hash ASIC Bitcoin Miner, then please visit our online shop. That's www.iboot.com and we sell all the things you need to start mining straight away. Each miner comes with its own free block eruptor controller and we also sell the power supplies. So thank you for watching and happy mining. Goodbye.